How many of you were here this morning and heard the first version of this? Okay, just over half. That's the worst possible situation. <laughs> so I, I will uh, rush through what I did this morning, and then we'll go into some uh, greater detail and some more explanations. So basically, a few years ago, I realized that a lot of people would like to write more modern C++. They had uh, gotten uh, convinced that that was a good thing for both their reliability and their performance, but they didn't know how. Sort of got lost in the set of feature set. You go on the web and you get every possible uh, advice. So I said, well, what's modern C++? How would you like to look your, your code to look like in five years? And uh, I wasn't the only one considering this, so I found several other people involved in projects like that. So we made a uh, joint project, and of course, to have us all uh, work together, uh, it had to be open source. Um, there was people from different and competing organizations and such. It was about the only way. And basically, I want a useful answer to this, not a theoretical answer. And uh, you can find it all over on uh, GitHub. If you can type in C++ core guidelines, you can find it. If you can't type that in, well, you probably don't need it anyway. Um, so the aim that uh, we're trying to do is to, to basically get C++ to where it was supposed to be. This is something that somebody can do if they know what they're doing, and we want the vast majority of the people to be helped to do it. I want complete type and resource safety. No memory corruption, no leaks, no garbage collector, just don't generate any garbage, uh, and no runtime overheads, except if you want them, like for your runtime range checking, can't be done statically. No uh, limits to expressibility, we really want to say as much as we can in ordinary C++, and uh, we want ISO C++, I don't want to go and design another language, it's just too hard, too much work. And uh, we want to the, the good code, the, the reliable code, the efficient code to be simpler, and we want tool enforcement, because people can't do that without help, not at scale. You may be able to do it on a page, you don't do it on a million line code base. So we want C++ on uh, steroids, and that's sort of one of the holy grails of uh, computing. And this is work in progress. Uh, we have a general approach where we have some guidelines, we have some library support, and we have some static analysis. It is not production ready in general, though there are large projects, million line code bases, that are using some of this. And it is not science fiction because of that. Okay, so the question that I get very often is, why don't you just fix C++? Uh, make it simpler and nicer. And of course I know how to do that. However, that would break a lot of people's code. So the story goes, it's C++ is too big and complicated, agreed. Um, so simplify it and give me just two more extra features. And whatever you do, don't break my code. This is impossible. And by the way, this will happen to every successful large system. This is not specific to C++. It is just dramatically difficult for C++ because C++ is older and more successful than most alternatives. And we have to remember stability, compatibility is a feature. Code that we wrote 20 years ago tend to run today if somebody hasn't broken the operating system. And therefore, we can assume it'll run again in 20 years' time, what we write now. That's very important. And it is a large-scale issue. This is why we can't break all of these nice applications. There's a lot of C++ applications, uh, hundreds of billions of lines of code, uh, millions of developers, and... It's, it's everywhere. Uh, C++ is generally invisible. You don't see it. It's like uh, housework. It's only seen when you don't do it. Uh, but it's underneath everything. We saw some Python examples this morning. What do you think runs the, the AI for Python? C++, of course. Okay, so uh, we want something uh, that's the coding guidelines. Uh, we want static type checking, release, no release, uh, as I said before. 
We're also no range errors, no null pointer references, no misuse of uses, no bloat, all of these good kind of things. You don't get that from a language by itself. You get it from proper use of the language. And so the, the, uh, this is part of the answer that we can't simplify the language, but we can simplify use of the language. And when we simplify use of the language, we can get all kinds of other interesting properties. Okay, now I'm going to slow down a bit. I've done my 10 minutes talk in five minutes. <coughs> and um, we hate coding rules. I mean, I've never met a programmer that liked coding rules. Everybody wants to write code just the way they like it. And uh, part of the reason is that the rules are written to prevent misuse by pro uh, poor programmers, not by magni uh, magnify the effects of good programmers. Um, they're also written very often by people whose first project with C++ is to write the coding guidelines. Um, and so they are panic-struck about all kinds of problems they've heard of or they've seen in their previous programming language. And so you get a lot of rules that focus on how you lay out things and whether you use underscores and names. And they're very keen on any feature they don't quite understand, they, it has to be banned. Uh, this is very unpleasant for those of us who actually know how to use the features. And what we need to do is have the rules based on solid programming principles, not by fiddly details and restrictions. And also the rules tend to get old and be full of bad advice. Um, a lot of people have had coding guidelines that wanted you to write pseudo Java. If you want to write Java, write Java. Um, C, C with classes, sort of eliminating 20 years of progress in C++, or even worse, write C, when, which brings you back to about uh, 18, uh, 1980. We need to do better. So we can do better. Um, modern C++, prescriptive, not punitive, and we want it teachable, uh, flexible, and of course non-proprietary uh, because we want to work with people working for other fields. We, don't, we actually have a lot of experience in how to make code good. Um, there's old problems, like uh, dangling pointers, mem memory corruption, buffer overflow. We've known solutions of these kind of things for 40 years, at least. I mean, I remember having exercises set li uh, like that when I was an undergrad. Uh, manual resource management does not scale. So remember to delete your mem memory uh, when you're finished with it. F call it delete, call it um, free, I don't care. Doesn't scale. It works on a one page, but probably not much more. Uh, smart pointers adds complexity and cost especially shared pointers, can be quite expensive in a multi-threaded system where you have to synchronize access to the use count. Uh, garbage collection is as best as partial solution. It just don't handle non-memory resources like uh, threads and files and locks and things like that. Also, it's non-local. We hate things that, in modern systems, hate things that are non-local. It always has a cost to it. Just having the memory over there on different near a different processor can be enough to kill your performance in some areas. And of course, if it's in another part of a distributed system, you can't garbage collect it. Um, and we want predictability. Static analysis, which is my favorite, doesn't scale. The algorithms are complicated, uh, O uh, cubed or something worse, and uh, it, it doesn't actually work for arbitrary code. I can write code that cannot be statically analyzed to be true, uh, be, be correct. And so we have to have something that stops us from, from uh, writing the code that cannot be analyzed and verified. And so we work with a cocktail of techniques. The basic idea here is that from medicine, there's no uh, miracle cure, no one uh, drug can kill the, um, the, the bug. Uh, and so, but if you use two or three different approaches, you can get to it. And that's what we're doing. We have rules, we have libraries, we have the type system, and we have static analysis, which basically enhances the um, type system. None of them can do it themselves, but 
it works in combination. The other principle we're working on is the uh, subset of superset uh, idea, which is an old idea of mine. But anyway, it is observed that everybody wants to subset the language. But to subset C++, you start by the most dangerous features are the ones we use to implement the abstractions you need to be safe. So you cannot cut into the uses of pointers, say, without destroying vectors. But you need vectors to uh, avoid pointers. So we have to do something else. And the way we do it is first we superset the language to a more ideal language. We do that by uh, using the STL, the standard template library, and the, the other standard libraries, and something called the GSL, which is about 10 classes that's written specifically for the guidelines. And then, once that's done, we can say, don't do the uh, nasty things that uh, get you into trouble. And so, uh, that's basically how we get the steroids. And uh, then we get to uh, how we write co code guidelines. Uh, on average, people have written guidelines just by writing a, a set of uh, guidelines that they think look good. And they've heard of. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't scale. What we need is to have, have a conceptual framework and it has to be articulated. We have to have the rules that says what we are trying to do that guides people when they come with, one, with a bright rule that says, okay, does it actually support where we want to go? So this is, a, this is the framework that allows us to, to, to basically uh, approve or disapprove rules. And that's sort of semi-philosophical. Um, things like static type safety, don't leak uh, any resources, don't waste time and space. This is still C++. That's a zero overhead principle in disguise. And um, so I'm not going to go through this in great detail. If we get time for a Q&A, I can get there, but I don't think we will. But the idea is, is a framework. You can go and look at it. And then... We cannot test, we cannot write a program that tests philosophy. Uh, that, that's not feasible. But we can test the individual rules once we write them, because they are directly related to the language itself and the way the language is used. Uh, some can be completely checked. In principle, we could put it into the compiler. Um, others are just heuristics. So some says, you, you violated this, and the other one says, this is probably bad. Um, and we, we have analyzers that, that look into this. Uh, so the examples are here. Uh, manage resources automatically using resource handles and RAII. I think that's probably the most, um, um, most uh, important rule of them all. And um, so we look for things that's acquired and see if they're re released, mostly through resource handles. Otherwise, it gets complicated. Um, we, we don't have a raw pointer, just points. It doesn't own something. It isn't an array. That's the first rule here. Again, important for simplifying things. Okay, I just broke every old C++ program in existence with that rule. Because you do, it's very rare to find a program that doesn't subscript, this, sub, uh, that, doesn't subscript that one. And what else do you do if you, how else do you represent ownership? I'll get to that. Uh, obviously, there has to be alternatives. You can't just ban, you have to provide a better alternative. Otherwise, there's no hope of uh, moving forward. And this is not uh, science fiction. Here is an old example, uh, actually a five-year-old example uh, on, from uh, Microsoft uh, Visual Studio that catches a potential leak. And it dumps you straight into the, um, in, into the rule that, uh, that says what you did wrong. And that also, if you click through, in the guidelines will tell you uh, what you can do instead. So here is what you can do instead for, um, for, for subscripting. We have an abstraction. It was built into uh, the GSL, the Guidelines Support Library, which is basically saying this is a ra contiguous range of objects of a given type. And that's what we use pointers to. That's where we subscript. That's where we use pointer arithmetic. 
Given this one, we can get rid of most of that. So basically, there's an array of 100, um, 100 uh, integers. And if we need to subscript, we either have to check the range checking, which uh, uh, ranges, which slows us down, or uh, we ha run the risk of making mistakes. What I'm saying here, give me a span of that. A span is an abstraction that keeps track of where the elements are and how many there are. Given that, I can then do a, um, a range for, for X and S. That one will have no range checking and it will have no chance of overrun. You can't do everything with that, but that's a good example. The information is there and we can use it. Of course, it also allows uh, uh, subscripting and things like that, but it's checkable. One of the fundamental rules of the game is if we can't check it at compile time, at least we should be able to write a check that checks it at uh, runtime. In other words, there has to be information enough to do the checking. This uh, thing is uh, going to disappear from the uh, GSL because we have gotten it into the standards. It's part of C++ 20. Uh, we want to put ourselves out of the uh, library business. Um, that, that's an important thing. We don't want to be another burden of things you have to load up and uh, learn. So uh, they're called core guidelines, core rules, is because not everybody can uh, do it all, and everybody will have extensions, and we hope that uh, there will be more work with more, um, more, more, more extensible rules and for specific areas. In particular, I would like to see rules for um, hard real-time code where you need predictability. Uh, very hard to write. So we start with what's essential for everybody, no resource leaks. We basically know how to do that. Uh, every uh, resource has to be anchored in a handle, which uh, live in a scope, and we can then use RAII. We can use move constructors and optimization to move these handles between scopes, and basically you then have a, a closed system for resources. You never leak. So I'm not going to go into that. I'm going into my least favorite problem here, uh, dangling pointers. Here we see uh, my illustration of a nightmare, because this is the worst nightmare. Um, here we have a piece of code that function f takes a pointer, looks innocent, it deletes that. Then I go down and use it, I make a new object, I call the function, and then I use the pointer I got. This is disaster, because we um, basically uh, I used the object after deletion, so instead of using my object, I may be scrambling yours. This has to be solved for about any form of, um, of, of safety and guarantee to be done, so we do that. The rules catch um, deletes of things that aren't uh, owners, and it, um, it, it catches news that isn't assigned to some kind of owner. So new and deletes disappears into constructors, destructors, and other resource management functions. And yeah, as I said, we just have to solve this. Basically, the rule is, is simple. It's been there from the early days of C. Plus, uh, of C. Basically, you mustn't point to an object uh, that's uh, below you in the stack, assuming here stacks grow upwards for illustration. Um, and so then we have to distinguish between pointers that just point and pointers that are owners. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Um, we have a low-level uh, owner uh, abstraction. Basically, an owner is a pointer that must be deleted or transferred to somebody else, which means that all the other pointers should must be deleted because they don't own anything. And this is not just pointers. We have to... Uh, deal with anything that can point to things, references, uh, smart pointers, whatever, containers or pointers and such. And, and we can deal with that. Marking every pointer with whether it's an owner or not doesn't scale. This has been tried many times in many organizations. Once you get the large number, people make mistakes. 
They mark things for owners that isn't mark things that isn't own, uh, that, that is owners. They forget to mark them and things like that. It doesn't scale. So the idea is we make most of that ownership annotation inside the implementations of ownership abstractions and uh, use it only when we have to pass things through interfaces like to see. And so uh, here is a use of a, um, an owner. Um, that point, uh, the vector is usually implemented by three pointers, an owner and two things that just says something about the um, uh, allocated memory. And so there's one owner and two non-owners. And to be able to get link compatibility uh, and all of these good things, owner of T star is simply an alias. You see the definition there on the screen. That is meant to feed the static analyzer so that they can uh, enforce the rules and the guarantees. And uh, that, that sort of work, it's not too difficult as long as you keep it relatively localized. Um, all of our static analysis rules are local static analysis rules. We don't uh, rely on global static analysis because we can't for real-size programs. And um, for dangling pointers, we have a fairly simple rule. An object points to something. So if I get a pointer, it's either a null pointer or a point to something, so I can return it. Uh, pointer to a local variable, obviously I can't return. Compiler has been able to catch that for a couple of decades. And um, when I put something into a new, into the free store, yes, it points to something, I can pass it out. There is, however, still a bug here because that was only the dangling pointer checking. It was not the, um, uh, the ownership checking. That new pointer, if it should be uh, coming out of the function, would have to be marked as an owner. So both things have to handle, uh, be handled. There's the ownership and there's the access. Uh, so together, they. Uh, leave a fairly simple system for checking uh, whether objects are live. So a dangling pointer sum uh, summary, it's actually fairly simple, and it's not just pointers. Then we have to deal with all the other problems. Um, mostly the other problems can be handled by uh, runtime checking or by abstractions that help. Uh, span, there's a not null type where if you assign something to it, it checks whether it's not. Um, and uh, we, we check for misuse of, um, of uh, smart pointers. We check for misuses of unions, for variant and such. So uh, this can all be done. And uh, to allow gradual adoption of this stuff, we have a notion called profiles, so you can say, today I'll check for dangling pointers, just dangling pointers, and they run the checking for that. Once you've got your uh, code clean of that, you can check for ownership, you can check for, for other things, but it's really important for large code bases that you can adopt this stuff gradually. And so there's lots of rules here. There's um, the philosophical rules and, and all the others, they're classified. Um, this is not the classification of what you can check individually. The, the, the profiles uh, go across the categories. But if you actually want to read this from the beginning to the end, which I don't recognize, uh, recommend, that's the organization. The idea is to use a tool and then be told where to read it when you have violated the rules. And there's a lot of support stuff here. Um, I think it's important to mention that the initial work on this was done by people from Morgan Stanley, Microsoft, Facebook, Red Hat, and CERN. So it was a broad spectrum in the industry, including people that usually compete. This is, uh, this is good. This is necessary. It also makes open source necessary because we could not collaborate. In, uh, in, in, it's either the standards uh, group where we, most of us came from, and, or it is open source. You can't just uh, have it closed. Um, our condition for working with each other was that it was available. And so there's uh, endless uh, specialized rules here. 
if I had another hour or day, I could walk you through it, but, but I don't. Uh, I'm running out of time, and I plan to end on time, so I'll go to the uh, overview here. Basically, maintain static type safety. Uh, don't throw in casts. If you throw in casts, you, uh, you, you, you sort of blind any checker. Um, so, so don't, and we'll, we, we, the rules will guide you towards not needing to have casts. Untagged unions, again, they're a problem. If you use this kind of uh, type punning in, in unions, you're in deep trouble, so don't use a variant. Be precise about ownership. Use the ownership abstractions uh, and use uh, owner if you are doing low-level stuff. And that means that resource uh, release is implicit, both for memory and non-memory uh, resources. We get the static guarantees, and then you can check for null point on range. If you feel like it, I recommend that you feel like it, because uh, very, very few programs are so critical that you can't afford it if your code is clean. Uh, like the, the range fours means that you don't actually have to uh, check on the individual uh, elements on the range. And I'm out of time, so unfortunately I can't do a, a Q&A. You'll have to find me afterwards. Thank you.